This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Bossom. I have got Francis Wooby with me. You are a social worker at the Rideau Community Health Services. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We've got a great connection with you folks there. We've, we've been doing regular interviews about everything that you do uh, at your, your services. And it's just a wonderful resource. Our, uh, it's actually Leeds, Grenville and Lanark you cover, right? Uh, yes, yes, that's, that's right. That's right. So today it's your turn. We're going to talk about uh, you as a social worker there. So let's let's talk a little bit about you. What's your background? Sure, absolutely. So I, I am a social worker. I work uh, here um, providing counseling at Rio Community Health Services. Uh, before I started here, um, coming up on my one year anniversary, as we said, uh, I did work for uh, Open Doors for Landark Children and Youth, working with the, the 12 through 18 and running some groups there. So uh, very familiar with Lanark County and uh, all the corners of it. Uh, love providing counseling. That's where I specialize in the, the clinical uh, aspect of social work. So doing the, the talk therapy, the psychotherapy work. Okay. Okay. So uh, specifically what you do there then, let's talk a little bit about what you do there. Absolutely. So uh, Rideau Community <laughs> Health Services, my role here is uh, no longer with youth. It's 18 and up and that's 18 and up, any age range. I provide uh, what is called brief solutions focused uh, counseling. So one to eight sessions where we have counseling to address um, mental health life concerns that are um, currently a struggle for the patients to, to deal with or, or to process. So we help along, uh, help them along with that part of their journey just by providing some information on what could be happening in terms of their mental health, how they're responding to uh, stressors in their life, just giving some education on how that works, basically, which often helps them put it in context. Uh, being a comprehensive health center, we work in partnership with the other providers here, so primary care, the other support uh, services, dietitians, uh, community supports, and we help provide that holistic approach, really identifying what could be helpful to their mental health that uh, is more on the physical end of things or the community-based social end of things. So um, it's not just uh, the straight counseling sessions, it's also working as part of the team. And, and that's what I really see you as uh, over there at Rideau Community Health Services as, as a great team. You can go and see a doctor or a nurse practitioner there and they may think, okay, you need a little bit of help with, from a social mm -hmm. worker or you may need some help from a dietitian, a nutritionist, uh, maybe some dental care. You're all there to help each other and it's just a matter of walking across the hall, I'm assuming, <laughs> to come in. Sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> perhaps, yeah. So I, I, that was going to be one of my questions too, is like how do people get referred to you, Francis? So really, uh, they can self-refer or be referred to um, by one of our providers here or from someone in the community, maybe, who knows of our services. And they would uh, just put their name in, um, be contacted by one of our community health workers and sort of walk through what services uh, would be helpful for them at this time. And that could include the counseling piece as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we do work really well as a team. Uh, also, more expansive than that, we try to connect with the community, other community agencies as well, and, and other initiatives happening. Uh, it, just wherever we think uh, things would be helpful for clients, we have a, a, a social determinants of health approach. Right, So we understand mental health and health are one, right? It's, it's our health in general. Um, that can be impacted by things that might traditionally not be thought of when you think of health, housing, uh, finances, uh, social situations, right? But we, are, we recognize their impact. And so we try to work with that as well to create some ideas like our social prescribing initiative that started where we'll maybe refer patients to uh, groups that are happening that could help them make connections, social, personal connections in the community or build a skill. So yeah, it's a uh, teamwork internal and external, which is really great. And, and you know what, we, we, we go, we get physicals every year, we get our eyes tested, we get our ears tested, we go for dental care every year. We should be taking care of our mental health as well. Absolutely. It's the one thing we, we tend to neglect. We sort of think that uh, 
oh, that's 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 only if there's a crisis or that's only if something happens that's that's really severe. But no, absolutely, uh, just keeping check on it and just yeah, just uh, really just getting some some education on it um, and uh, figuring out how you can make little improvements in your life that'll improve your mental health and your overall health later on down the road. And do you do individual counseling? Do you do group, family, that type of thing? So we provide individual counseling. Okay. Um, sometimes uh, patients might be accompanied by a family member or support person as well, but the, the treatment is for the individual. It's uh, one to eight sessions. So we try to identify really the primary um, challenge that they're, they're facing at the moment and see what strategies we can uh, work together to find that would, would help them. And how long is usually a session? Session is 45 minutes to an hour or 50 minutes, roughly, usually. So, um, yeah, that seems to be the, the, uh, the standard the golden hour. So it's a good time to sort of identify what's happening currently that day and go over some strategies, give some homework sometimes, uh, and then review it the next time. Now, I know, I know you weren't working at uh, Rio Community Health Services during the pandemic. I have a social worker background too. So uh, how was it for you going through the pandemic as a social worker? So the pandemic, yes, I, I was uh, in the community at a different agency, but uh, very similar stories from, from what uh, we talked about here at you know, Community Health Services pandemic. Um, it, there was a silver lining in that it really expanded our toolkit for delivering services. I think uh, phone and video services were still pre-pandemic a little bit foreign, a little bit unknown um, to counselors uh, in general, and uh, you know necessity drove us to those tools, the, the Zooms, the Teams. Uh, various uh, other things set up and really opened it up to a lot of patients maybe who would have been unable to or reluctant to come in. So it actually kind of increased uh, the accessibility and uh, really realized how functional it is. So that that was, um, if we could call it a positive of the pandemic. Uh, so it, it was a hurdle that we could overcome. Definitely noticed an uptick in mental health concerns, generally from, from all populations with the pandemic. It was really, um, uh, it was really a global crisis. Uh, it was uh, a global trauma, you know, things changed fundamentally and there were, you know, maybe a little harder to remember, but in, in the first days, it was a lot of unknowns, right? A lot of uh, very uh, significant unknowns of what's going to happen next. Uh, and that definitely took a toll. Uh, surprisingly, uh, another uptick came when things started opening up again and uh, schools returned and businesses returned. People thought, oh, I'll be relieved. It'll be great. It'll be happy. But uh, anxiety really rose again as we came back and had to re-navigate the, the rules, the safety, all of those issues. So uh, I think it really put mental health uh, in the spotlight Yes, that's right. That's right, for sure. For the whole, the whole isolation bit and everything like that, too. And uh, people just were not used to being alone, you know. And, but it was a godsend. This video and our technology got us through, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Now, where are you located right now? You're uh, in the Smith Falls <laughs> office because you've got quite a few. Yes. <laughs> so uh, my services are uh, out of the Perth office one day a week and then Smith Falls three, three days a week. Um, we also have office in Merrickville as well, and Brockville as well, although um, Brockville, I believe the, uh, the counseling part is delivered through video or phone for the time being. So um, yeah, we, we work all through the area. Uh, we can, uh, like I say, connect with, with folks uh, virtually or by telephone if in-person isn't an option. All right, and how do people get a hold of you, Francis? Sure. Well, they can call our main number if they'd like at 613-283-1952 and make an inquiry, be, inquiry about counseling services or community uh, health support services. Um, they can visit our website at redochs.ca. Lots of information there about our program services, groups that we run, uh, allies we're affiliated with.
Excellent, excellent. Well, I thank you very much for joining us today. I always look forward to our, our monthly interviews with the Rio Community Health Services. There's so much going on there and, and we're learning so much from, from everybody there too. So once thank again, we've got so Francis Wooby, you're a social worker with the Rio Community Health Services. Once again, what's the phone number to get a hold of you, Francis? So 613-283-1952. Well, thank you very much for joining us and thank you for everything you do to help people. Thank you.